You know what time it is. Welcome to the Trinity Force Podcast. Red Hurt, Resident AP, plays mid and his thighs are shady. Got a syndrome, can't nerf it. You can find him in the chat, type of worth it. And that's Hornet, sucking ill hell. Thought it was going up, once again it fell. Never spent a single dime at all. And if you step into his jungle, expect to brawl. All slander, that specialist. He's precise, doesn't tolerate estimates. The man's addicted by every hero. You can tell, cause his bank account's stuck at zero. And last but not least, your host, Bonophobia. Picks an 80 carry, and he's on ya. He's got the full mount, ground and pound. Don't get excited, it's not as sexy as it sounds. That's your whole team, enjoy the podcast. Put your headphones on, we'll have a blast We're checking email and Twitter, of course Just don't ask us how four guys make a try for us If I turn this on So alright guys, welcome to the Trinity Force Podcast I am your host, Ponaphobia And tonight, I am joined by Ranhurt Hey, 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 what's going on guys? And Der Oslander Hey, what's up everyone? And unfortunately, some of those who are watching live may see that Hornet is not here. He normally would have his camera on, but he is running a bit late, so he will conference in a little bit later into the cast. For now, it is just us three. We are the original Triforce, so you guys are stuck with us. Yeah. yeah for, for like half an hour, our, our name will make sense, and then it will not make sense again. So <laughs> just enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> unfortunately... A couple of these guys, ha- well, ranhurt has been playing, and I'm sorry, oslander has been playing threes with me. However, ranhurt has been balls deep, as you heard previously, into Diablo. Yeah. How's that working out for you? You, you liking it a lot? <laughs> yeah, I do like it a lot. You coming back to us anytime soon, buddy? Um, no. So, no. W- what you're telling me is you've been playing Diablo all the time, you're doing mm-hmm. a League of Legends podcast, and mm-hmm. you probably won't be back for, I don't know what, two or three weeks? Years yeah. <laughs> uh, on the on the low end. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, I get to replace you with Sotir or yeah, Optimus it's Tom. Fun. Yeah, it's uh no. I mean, I'll, I'll be back. I just I don't have that much time to play either game as it is. So it's taking me a lot longer to progress through Diablo funds than uh, I yes, would have gr- endlessly gr- grinding for loot. It sounds so fun oh, to me. Yeah, I already I already finished Diablo. It's great. Yeah, you did. Yeah, you got like <laughs> a quarter of the way through Act One, so this game sucks. Yeah, I, t- I tapped out and just gave my account away. That's, that's how I roll. <laughs> Much like his 3DS, he doesn't play it. Yeah, I, have a, I have a collection of bad purchases. <laughs> my my PS3, I don't even know when the last time that thing was on. That's <laughs> so what are you going to do with your PS3, Diablo? Can you, do you wish you could trade Diablo back in? Um, nah, not really. I mean, it'll get use from someone. Just not me. I guess. <laughs> just don't. I, don't, I, don't, I just don't like games anymore. I don't know what happened to me. It was the 3DS. Everything went down after <laughs> I bought that. Oh, I remember I that. Know. Day. I, I seem to recall a warning from Lostlander a while ago saying, like, you know, if and when I get a girlfriend, to expect never to see me again. So yeah, I don't know. I think part, we're. Th- <laughs> yeah, that's part of it too, because like. <laughs> It, if you go through like I don't know my history of playing games, there's always like any gap I have. That's always 100% the reason. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Oslander tried to have a life for a little bit there, and uh, <laughs> you know it's like what PlayStation? I don't remember PlayStation. <laughs> I remember PlayStation too. Uh, well, at least your Street Fighter career lasted for a little bit longer than anything else you've played. Yeah, well, Street Fighter that was a uh, I guess uh, a labor of love for many years. <laughs> Even that, I, I bought Street Fighter Cross Tekken, and that was probably just below the 3DS in terms of bad purchases over the last <laughs> year. I think I like played it two times, and I was like, yeah, let me just put this on Glide. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't going to happen. At least I didn't buy it. I thought about buying it to play with you, but I'm kind of happy that I'm stuck with League of Legends and playing that. So, um, this podcast really started off with a very grim start. No, <laughs> it'll like, it'll progress pretty well. Everybody's playing, and everyone's doing. Well, the Banhammer and I were playing threes after this, so. Oh, we played threes before this too. You'd be so proud of us, except for I didn't get Timo because Timo's awful. I was waiting for the quip. No quip back from Ranhurt. Nope, he, he's no too busy left clicking in Diablo to no, talk no to comment. us. No <laughs> comment. He's searching for gear on the auction house. So. No, I don't have it up right now. <laughs> Actually, when you when you brought up Glide, I remembered that I saw that one of my Glide auctions uh, was sold today, <laughs> and I, I threw the game away a while ago, so I gotta go cancel it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> yeah, I just have a pile of DVDs on there that I'm just never gonna sell. Even if they do sell, I basically net like eight cents. <laughs> so. 
<laughs> not even worth it to keep them up there. Yeah, I just it's like feel bad throwing them out. Yeah, eventually it's gonna get to the point where I'll like sell something. It's like you owe us a quarter. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, you can just take them all down now and just turn them in along with your 3DS and everything else. So, yeah, so if anyone's interested in a used copy of uh, Matador or uh, I don't even know what else. Well, how about we get back to League of Legends before this podcast goes any further downhill? I, I, I look at Radhurt, I can just see the uh, wear and tear in his face right now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, <laughs> we've been playing a lot of threes lately. Uh, well, not a lot. I would say we played, we played three, four games this last weekend. Uh, no, it was less than that. I think it was only two. Really? No. Just, it just felt like three or four. Oh. <laughs> I thought we pl- No, you're right. It was only two. I just feel like I played threes a little bit quite often, but I've actually been enjoying it, trying new comps and whatnot. And, um, Tristan, he's a listener of this podcast. He's been playing with us, and he set us up. You know, he joined us in the threes team since Ranhurt isn't playing. And he's, Yeah, he's the new Ranhurt. <laughs> he really is. It's funny, though, watching him play, because he's been playing Malphite in the bottom lane, and we'll have Austin. Awesome. sound like me at all. <laughs> no, 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 follow this. He's played in AP. He's in the bottom lane, however, and I, I was top of the Malphite. And he's 2v1-ing, because Malzahar does a pretty good job of pushing lanes back. Uh, what is this? E? W? I don't remember what it is. E, yeah. E, yeah. Um, so, he's, you know, he does a good job. It's a good carry to bring in there to push lanes. However, his ult's a little iffy. But he, he would walk up to, like, their tower and try to put some damage into it, uh, 2v1, and then die. And so my Malphite, I've got, like, 65 farm. He's got, I don't know, what, 30, 40 bottom lane and, like, three deaths on him. Because <laughs> he just keeps pushing up on the lane. <laughs> I was I was doing a poor job. I, I can never get the balance right on that map because I was jungling and I just can't ever get the balance right of ganking and the lane the one lane he was up against was like crazy annoying. It was Vayne and uh, Ramus. Ramus. So yeah, you I couldn't get in to stun Vayne. I was playing Udir, and then even if I did get past Ramus because he would just always taunt me, and then Vayne would just e me back. So it was like you know. Like I just couldn't get. All I could basically do was get them to lay off him for a yeah. little bit. So how do you like an Udyr in the jungle on that threes map? Yeah, he's all right, I guess. I mean, I used to play him a lot. Um, I think he's been nerfed uh, once or twice since since the last time I played threes with him. So I tried out Phoenix, which I don't think is as good on that map. It's got a decent start, but I think Tiger is better late game because. I don't know. My line with Phoenix Udyr, I don't even remember, but it was like I made like two kills, three deaths, and like 20 assists. It's like basically an assist bot. Let me just run in and stun something. And <laughs> do, do the work. Yeah, Malphite seemed to work really well on that map because he can push a lane very easily. Then he can come back in to engage with his ult anytime, and whenever you engage with like a giant stun, especially one that hits all three members, you've already chunked somebody down to at least half life. And I, I think he has a place in the threes map, but he's kind of like hidden OP. I know Hornet will probably accost me later for talking about him, but I'm really enjoying Malphite. But I think later we're going to try something crazy like a Pantheon Alistar bottom lane. Yeah, we're going to go no jungler just for one game. Because uh, I think in all the threes games I've played, I've come across another jungler like maybe like two or three times. So I really like the meta of having a jungler in that map because it gives two lane solo XP and you have the dragon control. Um, at least running smite on that map out of anything seems to be the best yeah you run across a lot of teams that don't even run a smite even if they're not going to have a jungler which is you know pretty dumb because I think we, did we steal a dragon in that game or I think there was one that was contested that we, was we steal pushed it, I don't it think back up, yeah. yeah I don't think we ended up having to steal it but it was going to be like the easiest steal ever because you know because <laughs> you have smite yeah and they didn't so well it's, gonna... well it's funny just some kind of Watching some of these people play threes, I know it's not a widely played arena at all, but knowing just a kind of a basic strategy of one one one, so one jungle, one top, one bottom, and ganking and warding all the time, and then just spending a lot of your time around that dragon because it spawns every five minutes seems to win those games a lot more than trying to push a tower out really early. Because yeah, well, that dragon, the dragon is like so broken because it's what is it like three hundred gold, and then also yep. it gives you a buff. Yep. which is just nuts. 300 gold on that map is... Huge. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the one thing about the map is that you're so used to the Summoner's Rift jungle where the creeps are just, like, you know, little weaklings, and then you go into Twisted Tree Lines jungle and just get, you know, if, if you don't have a, a strong jungler, you just get lit up. And it, it reminds me of the old uh, Summoner's Rift where until you get, like, Madreds or maybe even Wriggles, it, it's sort of a struggle. To even get through it at all, but don't you spend a lot more time ganking instead of trying to grab those buffs until you get wriggles? Yeah, but the thing is, like, the camps are tougher, so you don't 
you come out of the jungle with like way lower life than than you know or at least early i mean late game it doesn't, later on it doesn't matter but early it's tough to gank because you're at, you're at like maybe 60 percent health a lot of times oh just coming I out was, of the jungle i was starting with i i'm starting with boots too which i think is probably wrong you probably have to go cloth and health pots but I just yeah. get so used to having that that mobility. It's like hard to give it up. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to our sick level two gangplank? Uh, yeah, I actually was running without. I was running without flash too, which I always run flash on that map. But I was running uh, smite exhaust just because uh, the one game we were up against a cannon, so that was basically my assignment every fight: exhaust cannon. And the second game, I think I just left it on. I mean, I guess I was trying to exhaust vein, but she. Would either she get would blown just, up or get ran yeah, pushed out. Yeah, I get taunted. It was just I never got to Vayne. All my kills were on like they had a Lux and a Ramus. I think those were all my kills. Were on. <laughs> Someone you don't think you're gonna be killing Ramus. So it would be fun. It'd be fun to play some more and report back next week how we do. We're just trying to. We didn't have the team Trinity Force. We never kept the name of it, so we have to play something. I mean, since we can't get five people, three seems to be what we can do. But uh, moving on, I actually want to talk about episode 9 of the Trinity Force podcast and you guys have been following us for a while at episode 9 we had a show called From Minnows to Sharks now uh, Riot back in 2009 tried to start a program where people would help out other people by making I believe it was a low level account and you would just try to help other people out and you would get some kind of prizes for it and this was just trying to foster the community and really get it going but now that the community has blown up they've kind of dropped the program well we're kind of taking a spin on this from uh, Minnows to Sharks idea and we're going to turn it around and try to give you guys more tips so going back to episode nine we spent a lot of time talking about positioning and cs and just your very basic functions so we're going to try to take that up to the next level in this podcast where uh, we're going to talk about communication position we're going to talk more about positioning uh timers mias and then you know give you a rundown of what we're going to go through so i hope you guys are ready for this and you know if you have any feedback please feel please feel free to leave it at feedback at trainingforcepodcast.com because we can always recap this next week so you know diving right into this I, the first thing i want to talk about are timers and it seems anytime I play any kind of fives, ranked, whether it be ranked or a draft, not many people keep timers on these different buffs. And I think it's huge to keep a timer on it. Now, running down the basic ones, you have Baron, which is a seven minute timer, and he spawns at 15 minutes into the game. Dragon, however, spawns at two minutes and 30 seconds into the game and has a six minute timer. And Lizard and Golem buffs, they spawn at 155. I'm sorry, yeah, the, the Golem buffs. What's the Golem buffs? Blue buff, red and blue. Oh, right. I was thinking um, double. The first reason I was thinking they're both lizards. I knew they were going. But yeah, lizard and golden bust. They, they're five minute timers and they spawn at 155. And of course, the small camps spawn at 140. And this all this all spawned from me playing a game the other day where I counter jungled the enemy team's blue and I kept the timer on it. And I had the timer of like 703, I believe it is, because I had to run over there and grab it early. Now, for the next 20 minutes, I had a timer on that blue for every six minutes or five minutes that it was up and i was coming back and always stealing it this really sets the enemy team down because the middle can't get blue and ran her can contest how you know how needed blue is for the middle especially if you can give it up you know even the first one giving it up but more likely you'll give the second one but just really keep your eye on the timer now do you guys feel the same way that i do that not many people keep timers in these games i think uh, people t people time like dragon i mean i'd say in uh, you know the games I play, I'd say f you know fifty percent of the time someone times dragon, but the other and and Baron obviously, but the other the the blue and red that usually doesn't get timed. I mean early on it's easy because the junglers will basically start with one, either red or blue, so you know at this around the seven minute mark, you know your your blue's up or your red or their you know their red or blue. So just. You can kind of keep track of the first rotation that way that you, you know it's up but um in terms of other things i actually like to time wards sometimes although um you know that's kind of more of like a try hard thing but a good way to do that is actually if you see them ward just ward there as well so you know exactly when you know that word is, is gone so your your jungler knows he can come in so right and words last three minutes so i mean if, if you don't want to do that you just want to time it by recording the time just you know it's a good way to do it just every you know in three minutes the word will be gone yeah yes yeah, yeah. absolutely hey hornet are you uh, welcome into the podcast haha <laughs> sorry guys a little delayed there all right you got your audacity running I do. All right, fantastic. If you don't mind, just turn down your um, volume on your headset maybe a little bit because there's just a tiny bit of echo. But we are just got done talking about 
we, well, we just started talking about timers, and I ran through all the different timers and whatnot. Oh, Adam, hold on. Are we are we going to uh, start and stop? You know. No, no. Just keep them running. I I, I got them. Are all you gonna is it going to be a pain to sync up? I got it all taken care of. Okay. Um. Oh. <laughs> yeah, but w we've got the, you know we were just getting done talking about timers and whatnot and saying in Auslander just got done saying that three minute timer on a on a ward is the you know is a very good one to keep because then you know where everything's at and I think the the best play the best place to start with that would be on dragon knowing when dragon's going to spawn you can drop a ward you know two minutes and 30 seconds before it starts up and you'll have a timer on not only on your ward but you have a timer if they have one there as well or they drop one you know just after you because a lot of times you'll drop one and the enemy team will walk up and drop one following you very quickly especially in the higher elos where they're really watching the dragon um the one thing i will add to that is uh you know a lot of times even if dragon is not there say for instance you lost it it's still great to have a ward in that location just because it is such a high traffic area uh especially for the purple team's blue buff um and also if uh, junglers come around and if uh, mid roams around, um, it, it definitely helps in a lot of areas because uh, if you're if you're on purple side, you know if middle comes to roam, you know if a jungler is coming down and you happen to not be uh, too spaced out as far as your lane goes, uh, it definitely makes a difference as far as you know uh, not only on on dragon timers but just for knowledge of of, of vision for where. Uh, you know any any particular opposing players might be and it's definitely a, a good thing to have i also find that a ward even close to baron even if it doesn't see baron uh, a lot of times you're seeing wards being spread further down from top lane further than just the bushes the tri bush and the bush and river to actually uh catch more people to catch junglers and more people roaming if they happen to be coming up so that's just another reason to have a ward and and good timers for it as well Oh, absolutely. I think it's been pounded in everyone's head forever. Buy wards, buy wards, buy wards. Everybody should buy a ward. I always, in my first back, maybe carry if I can. I'm picking up two Dorans and a ward. Yeah, another thing you want to do is, uh, you know, you don't have to take the enemy blue in order to get a timer on it. Most times, the your mid, if you're in mid, uh, the mid opponent is going to telegraph going to get blue. They're going to just leave and then come back two seconds later with blue. So you can actually get a pretty accurate timer on that, and uh, then then you know five minutes later, go you know with uh, with the jungler and you know maybe bot lane or depending on which side you're on the top lane, and uh, you can maybe pick up two kills over over at blue when the jungler and the mid go to get you know on the respawn. So you don't necessarily have to take blue in order to get the timer on it. And I want to mention something else, and this is uh, something that I added: is it, don't don't underestimate the power of getting a pink ward as opposed to a green ward. Um, there are a lot of times when you need to consider, you know, it may seem like it's costing you 50 more gold, but if you know where a ward is that you're going to use a pink ward on, you know, pink ward area too, and you're going to catch an opposing ward, that's 25 more gold back from it, and actually it's only 100 gold when you think about it. Um, I've actually started, when I play top lane, I've actually started buying pink wards when I go back so that I can actually help my jungler uh, have a, a Shroud of Secrecy coming in for a gank because if I can eliminate their ward that they put down, uh, that, that allows my jungler to come gank without you know, any detection. And I think there's a, there's a big difference in, uh, uh, you know, you may think it's, it's, on, it's 50 gold difference, it's really only 25 if you can catch their ward in the meantime it's also great for controlling dragon it's also great for controlling baron it's also great you you see it a lot of times in bot lane controlling uh the two bushes bot lane or the bush in the river bot lane or even the tri bush where you need to control what wards you think your opponents may have so that you can keep the crowd of you know, the shroud of secrecy from them and keep them from having knowledge while you gain more knowledge and also for twitch junglers <laughs> uh, no kidding <laughs> Twitch jungles. I've seen a lot of Twitch being played in high elo, elo yeah. recently. A lot. Mm -hmm. and a lot of Nautilus too. I have Impressive. seen Nautilus being banned pretty often now in in high elo games, which is hey. a little surprising. Because um, of me. Yeah, because of you. That's right. It was because of me. I played Nautilus and then went and played Diablo, and everyone's like, "Oh shit, time to play Nautilus." Obviously, <laughs> duh. <laughs> well, whatever Randher does, we're always ahead of the curve here on Trinity Force Podcast. Seriously, remember Saporic? 
Yeah, <laughs> going yeah, back. That's uh, going back way back in the day, isn't it? <laughs> that's like November time. Yeah, that's that's true. Me, does that mean I get to take credit for mouth fight in a couple months? Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I know. I, I had just got done talking a little bit about Malphite because I'd been playing him in threes, and um, I said Hornet's not going to want me to give up the secret of Malphite, so I did not talk about him too much. Not yet. Let me let me keep gaining Elo from him, and um, <laughs> then I'll consider then I'll consider actually sharing the secret. There you go. It just just keep riding that Malphite train, and you know, like we're doing now when we're all talking to each other and really you know getting to know everybody. Communication in the team especially in rank matches, is huge. Again, going off this game that I played the other day, I was playing Udyr, and a lot of these, a lot of the, what I'm talking about um, had spawned off this rank game that I had played, where the Olaf in top lane talked to me the ent entire time. He kept timers when I didn't grab them, and he would talk to me, hey, by the way, uh, Warwick doesn't have his flash up. You can come gank him now. Okay, well, I'm going to come I'm gonna come top lane as soon as I can to get that um, down. Bottom lane, s tell me, you know, let's push out for Dragon right now, guys. I'm ahead of this AD carry by a few CS. We can push him to the tower, and now we can all go get Dragons. So, communication in this entire game, there's a lot more that I'm missing, and I'm sure the other guys will be able to bring that up. Yeah, it's really important, and uh, we all can attest to it, um, you know, because most of our games are spent with myself and, and uh, Ponophobia just yelling at each other incessantly the entire time, and everyone else is trying to communicate about you know, global objectives and setting up ganks and pushing lanes and things, and it's just the two of us jawing off at each other about how much we suck and I wish you were dead. <laughs> God, I wish you wouldn't you had. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. How many dives I failed on. And yeah, ninety percent of our games end with someone yelling, "You're dead to me," and <laughs> the Skype call. So. <laughs> <laughs> on a more serious note, I will say, um, and I will credit Pone on this, is we played uh, three people in a in a five-person match. Uh, three of us were on Skype together, and uh, Pone and, and his friend Reckon had pulled the bottom lane as Graves and Leona, and he had such a significant CS advantage over the opposing Ash uh, in their bottom lane, I think it was at some point. I think it was at 170 to 40 or something right. <laughs> like that. And you said, "Okay, I have kills. I have an infinity edge after I forget the number. It was 10 or 12 minutes, and I will I will about to have my uh, my phantom dancer. We need to push and take advantage. And so, you know, we'd go distract the enemy team. Meanwhile, he'd just go mow down a tower, and you know." Nobody mows down a tower quite like an AD carry who's fed with almost, you know, final build. Uh, maybe a maybe a fully built TF is the only other one I can think of that just mows down towers. Excuse Nasus. me so easily. Your beloved Nasus, he can mow down. Nasus can too. That That's is right. right. You know what? I just I just haven't seen Nasus because he gets he gets shut down so easily without getting farm uh, recently, but. But then you should uh, ask Ponophobia what he does after he gets done pushing down his lane's tower. I come into the middle lane and I come and steal all Red Heart's farm. Exactly. <laughs> I, and now it's actually this is like the lane the moves. He just comes into my lane, just sits there, and starts farming up. I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> well, you I can't go farm lost. my lane. <laughs> God damn it! Get bent. It's funny now that you've haven't played in a week. I've gotten a lot better at stalling the lane and not taking the tower so early. And I don't come in mid. I actually I let mid have the farm all, t all the time. It's all lies. It's all lies. I don't know why you do this. <laughs> Nothing but lies. Good communication, friendly gameplay, making the right calls, not stealing mids farm. Oh, it's I know what you're talking about. Lies. Yeah, you know, the best is when you're playing an AD carry bottom, and people are saying, hey, jungler's up and top taking his red, and you've already taken out the first tower. That gives you the perfect opportunity to ward up their blue. Let's assume your blue side pushing into purple. And you could take two towers, for the, you know, I would say, for the price of one. You got the first tower down. Go ahead and just start pushing the second tower down. You know where everyone's at. You know you can get out of there in time. Just don't make a stupid call and sit there all day. But that comes from back to communication. You have to know where everybody's at. And you may not have the best map awareness, but if somebody's pings and says, "Hey, so and so is top lane," you know to go and you know push a tower out. And vice versa for top lane. If bottom can keep everyone distracted by dragon, top lane's got a free reign all over the towers. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good thing to do. Is if if you see the jungler, always call it out the other team's jungler. Because that gives, you know, if he's top, gives your bottom lane uh, the ability to be a little more aggressive. Same thing with mid. And uh, also, it'll, you know, if, if he's out of position, it lets your jungler go in and steal some of the objectives, like a red buff or a blue buff, or even Absolutely. even just take the big wraith or the big wolf or something like that, just to, just to slow the other team down. 
yeah. I can't tell you how many times where I know, for instance, if, if, if this is especially true in a game where I'll play with Pwn, is he will say, okay, the jungler's down here. As soon as I know that, and I'm not ganking a lane or I can't gank a lane, I am automatically in the top half near red buff, and I'm going to take the big golem, I'll take the big wraith if I can, and I'll take red buff if I can. And just, it, it's like an immediate reaction now to know, okay, I saw, I saw the jungler down there, okay, I'll go. Or if I think their blue buff timer is going to come up, which if you play jungle long enough, you have an innate sense for when timers come up, especially blue and red. Uh, just from your jungling presence and about what time you think they'll come up. It's usually about the same for the opposing uh, junglers, even if you may not have anybody who visited to find out the timer. And it's just an innate sense that if you see the jungler, say, gank top lane and you're on blue side, and you think their blue is going to be up, you and, and you know you're playing against a blue-starved mid lane like an Anivia, you know you want to go get that like as soon as right. you can. And you can at least, and you can also coordinate that with bot lane, and and maybe just the support even. I'll leave the bot lane, you know, leave the AD carry to get his farm, but have the support go with you and, and have a little backup to see if you can steal it. I mean, those are, those are some of the things that definitely come into play uh, when you know where the opposing jungler is, and even warding, you know, partially into the jungle. We always talk about that ward. Uh, if you're on purple side, and you put that ward, that you know, there's a ramp that comes from river right next to the race and you put that ward right at the corner of that ramp so you can see both down the ramp and into the jungle a little bit I can tell you how many times that ward is placed because it has such good vision of the area that has a high traffic volume you know, speaking of the, the innate sense if you want just kind of really rough timers let's say the enemy team starts at blue you know their blue is going to spawn at about 805, 810 assuming he Seven. took it down is it, no it's it goes to it, it's one five. No, it's it's eight. No, it's no, it's seven. seven. You're right. It is seven oh five. That's like I said earlier. You're, why are you math? arguing with the math lander? Uh, what the hell's the matter with you? I, I like to argue. So seven, seven oh five, meaning it's gonna spawn between eleven and twelve minutes. Again. Yeah, right? I did the math right. Eleven oh five, twelve oh five, roughly. Depending on when they took it. And and if they started at that buff, so I guess that's just the innate sense. So once again, I'll just say it's 7.05, and then around 11 minutes, it'll pop up again. 12, 12, Jesus Christ. Dude, Set, I can't. 3, I 5, can oh my God. With someone that can't do math. How about you just say it for me, and I just will never talk math. <laughs> yeah, I want you I want you to recap what I just tried to say for the last, you know, yeah, 30 so seconds. It's, it's roughly 7 minutes. If they started blue, that's when I'll respawn. Then it's roughly 12, and then, you go. know, 17. We can keep going. 22. Uh, <laughs> But <laughs> well, that's perfect though. So those are just innate. Or those are just rough timers for people. The bat hammer. The bat hammer is kind of like the Hulk in the Avengers. <laughs> I'm kind of like Captain America. <laughs> like I tell people what to do. I tell Ranher do this. I tell Horn to do this. And then I get to the. And it's always something like complicated, like uh, you know, reposition for a gank on top in three minutes. And then for the bat hammer, I just say, Pwn smash. <laughs> that's what he does. He just smashes. I'm just really we good at being aggressive and smashing. We just don't let, we don't have him do any real deep thinking. I remember the last time you told me to do anything? Oh, shut up! Stop talking. <laughs> I was actually thinking the same thing, but you know, I was, I was going through my head like, when did just, just for the purpose of the story, something? you can't go along with me, guys. Okay, Jeez. sorry. Right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Your direction and and uh, general generalness is amazing. Who cares if it's not true? Just go along with it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, seven seven, seven command presence of this man. Seven minutes and 20 okay. seconds, that's what it's going to spawn. I'm telling you now. Just just listen to me, because I said so, and I just sound so great. Yeah, got Actually, it. I want to talk about something that do it. Uh, we all don't do enough, and that's like, um, you can always tell, especially bottom lane, if a gank is coming, because something, something stupid will happen. Like, you'll say, why is this Soraka all of a sudden running at me? Um, so you always know, <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, and, and, yeah, unless the uh, Mr. Rock is ran her, but that that's always like, you know, you're like, oh, okay, a gank, a gank's coming in, so you just back off, you know, obviously trying to get baited here. Um, so that's like something that Adam uh, Pone, excuse me, and I discussed doing that we really never, never really follow up on. It's just like posturing up, like you're expect, like a gank from your team is coming in. So just to keep the other team on edge, you know, just do something slightly irrational, like. Have your support kind of walk up, almost like you're trying to fish for a stun or something, just out of the blue, and do that, you know, throughout the lane. So then, when your jungler does come 
down like the bottom or wherever if you posture up like that they're so conditioned now to thinking okay he's just being an idiot for a couple seconds that maybe they lower their their guard and jungler gets in and gets a you know a good gank off for you so boy cried wolf syndrome yeah, yeah basically <clears throat> we uh we we talk about doing it but we never actually do it because well we uh, haven't really played together or played bottom lane together since that point yeah, that's true. Because Pwn and Record do irrational things all the time. But they work! How many times have you seen? I have a video of me that Sotir watched where we got a level 1 kill on Ajana just because Record sat in the bush in the river and took her out very early. We do irrational things that work, damn it. Wait, ask Hornet what happened last night in the bottom lane with that Graves. <laughs> Leona, we about botched it completely. <laughs> well, what was it? You did botch it a couple times. I forget what we were doing. I think. One of the last games I played, I was playing, I think, a Moo jungle, and so I needed to start at blue, obviously, and I meant blue, and I'm like, come on, guys, let's make sure I get blue. No, what, what's Pwn and Reckon do? Hey, uh, let's go take their blue. Like, obviously, <laughs> they were going to be there. They had a, a jungler that was starting blue. I think they had, like, fiddlesticks. And you're, like, running in there, just the two of you, in, into five of them. Like, oh, let's take their blue. But we didn't die. No, you didn't die. You came out with, like, half-life. <laughs> oh, that's bullshit. Like, how many times have we started over there and tried to take the blue and actually pushed them back and really made the uh, the bottom lane, or the, their jungler in their bottom lane spend more time over there while you got more time to run around the jungle? You know what, from there, when we're over there contesting it and making it so we can't get it right away, you just need to go run your ass over to his raids. Oh, jeez. See, listen to that. Listen to this knowledge. I'm just dropping bombs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, let me also say that as far as fainting goes in the bottom lane... It's it's especially good with um, Alistar, Sonya, Sonya, yes, yeah, Sonya, yeah, those of Mortal Kombat, Sona. Luke Kang, Johnny yeah. Cage, Maokai, yeah. uh, and uh, there was one other. Leona can also pull it off, where you can be a little aggressive, just to faint that you're coming in to send them back uh, before you come back. It, it, it's it's it, there's only certain. Either either supports that can really either poke very well or can you know go dive in and get back out with having enough health and beefiness to not really struggle if they come back. Uh, it's it's just one of those innate things of of fainting and and I know double lift has and Chowster have definitely talked about this in, at at various times where you posturing definitely does set it up where you don't have a, a definite pattern for them to work off of if actually something is coming and it really makes sense especially for the gank when the jungler actually can enter the bottom bush in bot lane uh, and get there safely because because I think that's one of the best baits you can do is to have a jungler right there waiting for you uh, waiting for them to come up and, and actually for that gank to pull off no, it's, yeah it's a good idea we need everybody needs to do it more often we need we need more feints and we need more or less size and less screaming at each other I'm looking at you, ran her. It's going to be the same, except I'm doing it in a different game at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> so moving on, the next thing I want to talk about, and this goes along with communication, is don't ever expect MIAs. Ever. No one you should, I mean, ideally no one should be calling it unless you're on Skype together because it just takes too long to type it. It's, it's really, I look at it as a luxury. You should have such good map awareness that you know where everyone is at any time that you're, you know, any point in the game. And, that's, and that goes along with pinging uh, for the junglers. So, you know the jungler's top lane, however, middle is missing. Don't expect that the MIA that that middle is coming down there, because by the time it's going to be typed out, the middle is probably already down near bottom lane, or top lane, or wherever you're at. <laughs> now, let me also say, I, I've now focused so much on the mini-map on the bottom right-hand corner that I can tell you I, I, I could almost ignore chat unless I'm actually backing and have time to look at it. Like, I literally do not look at my chat window that often. So even if I see it, even if there is an SS or a Mia, I can tell you so many times I've, like, completely missed it and not seen it, but it didn't matter because I was actually watching the map now. Like, it took me a little while to really program myself to actually watch. Um, and I will say, as a jungler, it's a little easier for me to acquaint where everybody is because I'm constantly looking at lanes while I'm running through the jungle just to see where gankable lanes are, just to know if guys are there, if they're not, if what's going on within a lane, per se. So, uh, you know, Mia's, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, look, it's, it's nice to put Mia's for people who actually pay attention to chat. 
I can tell you now, I hardly pay attention to it at all. Nah, I don't ever pay attention to the chat anymore. Especially when they people are just spouting off about why the jungler isn't here, why the jungler isn't doing that. I don't especially care. I'm here to play my game. Uh, unless they're complimenting you, right? Like, like you know, your MLG pro. Remember uh, that? Yeah, the, the, dude, I, I'm taking like 3v1 on them. They go, this, this Graves, MLG. Uh, MLG worthy. Yeah, sure. Sure. Wasn't there Congrats. a moment where somebody shouted out Ranhurt Syndrome in the game? Yeah, I had one the other day where I was there. playing. I had a guy go, oh, so much Ranhurt Syndrome in this game. And I was like, no way! <laughs> I was what? I was so excited when he said it, and but I didn't like capitalize on it. Dude, I'm from the Trinity Force podcast. I'm like, well, my e fame only goes so far. Apparently, Ran Hertz is just all over there. We just need 30 <laughs> million people calling it Ran Hertz syndrome. That is, yeah, we'll eh, I'll take a million. A million will work. Okay, <laughs> we'll we'll set on a million. Settle. So if you guys are out there, don't forget to say Ran Hertz syndrome in chat. Then when people go, "What the fuck is that?" You can just say. <laughs> It's when it's when you have you're too ballsy. That's true. That's true. Is it That's ballsy? true. Really? Ballsy, ballsy, greedy, <laughs> overzealous. Well, before you got here, there's definitely there's definitely a dumb factor. Okay? <laughs> there really is. Yeah, there is. Yeah, speaking of greed, before you got here, he started talking about how Diablo is all about the money, and now Ranhurst's turning into this greedy banker. He's gonna be talking to Mathlander. So if I buy this and invest it back, I'm gonna make how much percent? You're gonna, you're gonna have exactly. a, you're gonna have them on your phone on like speed dial, aren't you? Is this oh, worth yeah. the investment? Yeah, I need my return on investment. <laughs> Why does See? that sound like another Blizzard game I know where you could manipulate the uh, auction house on a particular server and you know yeah. make money that way? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, th th thanks Blizzard for fostering an economy about money. Oh, surprise, surprise! Sounds yeah, like, they really uh, ruined the game. Their money's the just house. as real as ours, though. So. According to the according to the uh, gold farmers, it is. <laughs> it's some good money. You know what you actually just uh, use your money on building items in League of Legends, and really looking at what you're buying and building it toward the enemy team. You know, if I think the big thing I see is a lot of people just follow guides and they don't know how to read guides particularly well. And it says, I "I'm Udir. I should rush a." I should rush a, uh, a heart of gold and then boot build that into Randuin's Omen and potentially a Wit's End, you know, depending on how you decide to want to play your Udyr. Uh, but they don't ever say anything about, oh, here's the optional item of a Negatron Cloak. Why would I get a Negatron Cloak? I just want to build for damage. And it really bothers me when I see these people going to these games and they don't know how to build their characters because there's some games where you're playing against a uh, Kennen and a Vladimir, for example, which is all magic damage, and you got an Udyr building a Randuin's Omen. That's not going to help you very much in a team fight, and not as much as like a Negatron Cloak would go for you. Well, that's why you build Wits End, because Wits End comes with magic resistance involved, and that's why you build it. And then there's cases when you don't build it because it doesn't make sense. Uh, if you go, to, you know, Udyr is actually a special case where you know, you, you sometimes make a difference between, you know, do you think Phoenix stance or do you think Tiger stance for your main damage is actually going to be the better way to go. Uh, but, you know, that's part of the game type where do you think you're going to be able to get in and really damage some people because they're coming in and they're going to be melee on top of you? Or are you going to be able to, you know, do you want to shred a single target or do you want to actually get multiple targets when you can? It's... Uh, the other thing that really bothers me is, uh, you know, you you see who is actually in the game is going to be the big threat. Uh, for instance, a lot of times the AD carry can can actually get you know four kills from bot lane and get a massive amount of farm because they they just dominated their lane, took a, took a tower and can go farm anywhere they want to. Now they have a hundred CS lead and four kills. Okay. That should tell you right now you need to look at damage, or you, I'm sorry, you need to look at armor, because you have to try and mitigate it. Uh, whoever you you know, if you have a, a dedicated tank at this point, there needs to be, you know, some items that are going to help everybody. A frozen heart, for instance. Um, you you really need to consider, you know, the type of damage you're going to see, and then you, you also need to adjust, if especially to try and mitigate, especially if you're coming from behind. Uh, if you're if you're down in kills, down in gold. You know, there's there's a couple different ways that you really have to consider how you're going to make that up, and one of them is looking at the damage you're going to receive. Another one is to you know consider what helps you and your abilities the most as compared to who you're fighting. Uh, you know, a lot of times in top lane matchups, you're going to build differently depending on who you're going against. I know I've I've seen it where 
Uh, if you're going against, if you're playing top lane and you're regular damage, like tankiness, say like a Malphite, you're going against an AP character, I've seen it where you build three Null Mantles and you build them into different items that you can use. Because Null Mantles give you that MR that's going to help you survive early and let you farm away and, and, and let you, you know, control the lane as you need to. No, yeah, that's uh, more people need to be doing that. More people need to be building for what they're playing against, what team they're playing against, what they're doing top lane. I and I and I keep saying it, but it all goes back to the guides, and I think guides are really hurting some of the some of the players in League of Legends, and that's why a lot of them are saying they're stuck in Elo Hell because I'm following the Rain Man guide to an awesome Teemo, but it says I should have red buff all the time, but I never have it. Why isn't this working for me? And. and <laughs> That, that it's it's because you're not going to always be getting it. You need to learn to adapt to your situation, and I think that's another main point is just adapting to the game you're playing in. If you're bottom lane... If, I, I play a lot of bottom lane, so I'm always going to bring it up. If you're bottom lane, you're being pushed back really hard, and you don't, and you can't keep it in between your tower where your tower's not hitting them, and the, or your towers are not hitting the creeps, and where you know, you're safe at, there's the, the little safe zone just before the tower hits the creeps. You need to be pushing it back as much as you can to try to get it away from the tower because you want to have control of the lane as much as you can. Now, there always are a bunch of if that if there's whatever and buts, but manipulation of of your lane knowing, you know, how to game the game to to do it in your advantage is huge. I mean, just just consider you need when you get to know every champion in the game and you get to know how matchups break down. I'll give you I'll give you another for instance. Uh the the one rarity, but I do see it happen, is when you when you see a fiddle six bottom lane as a support. You need to consider that if you didn't take a cleanse because you weren't sure who was going to be the support or you weren't sure you know how the match was going to be because I can see fiddle being tricky and you think oh fiddle might be in the jungle. Well, you might need to build a quick silver sash because you probably need the MR and you need to get out of a fear that could throw you into the middle of, you know, a gank that ends up, you know, destroying you because Fiddle got a hold of you really early. It's just another consideration that you need to have for who you're matching up against. It's, it's just an example, but um, it's not, you know, guides are great for giving you a basis for what you can build your character with. But there also needs to be, you know, the difference between good players and great players is knowing the matchups of what they're going to see, how it's going to play out. I still remember, you know, back when uh, certain pros were really streaming and really being, you know, descriptive of what they were doing and why they were doing it. You know, you're starting to lose that nowadays. I feel like you're not getting that as more, you know, as, as we were back in, you know, fostering and start of season one, maybe season two, end of season one. I meant. The, the, the pros would tell you what they're doing. I know Scara still does this, where he explains, okay, this is exactly what I'm doing for this lane, and this is exactly why I'm going to build this way and what I, what I expect to happen. Remember, Chaos used to say, okay, this particular matchup bottom lane is going to go this way. It might start off a little slow for us, but then we're going to gain as we go. Like Those are the type of things that you need to consider uh, as you learn more about the game to know, okay, I know this matchup, and this is how I expect this to go. This is what I need to watch out for and play it that way because the more you know the, the more knowledge you have of what you're going to see and if you don't know it you know play you know cautiously think about well okay they have this ability or this ability and this might affect me in this way or that way like just just know how you know certain certain characters and certain uh champions play yeah, it's huge for all the lanes. In fact, top lane seems to be the one that's probably the hardest for that because there's just so many different top laners that you're going to be going against. There are so many matchups, so many different ways to play it. Uh, I, you know, another example is uh, I know there are some top laners that will build exclusively all armor if they can in their runes and and go that route so that when it comes to getting damage from somebody that's a you know an AD an AD damager. Uh, there's just nothing happening to them. They, they get sit there right. and it feels like they're just you know just bouncing right off of them for any kind of damage. Well, I actually it, have, I actually have a rune page. I have two of them because my couple top players I play would be Singe or Yorick. I actually have a Yorick armor page, a Yorick MR page, and the MR page doesn't have any armor, and vice versa with the armor page. Mm -hmm. And I even have Singe the same way: Singe and MR, Singe no MR, 
and uh, you know you see a lot of people if you kind of look at Dyrus's pages if you were to look up either of his accounts he has so many pages that are made for specific top lane matches and you, mm -hmm. ha you have to run it that way because you have to know what you're going to be going against now when you get up in the like the pro level and whatnot you usually see pretty much the same matchups but when you're playing ranked you never know what you're going to get just like we've seen so much twitch walking around at 2100 2500 elo now that you know the guys just do what they want so it, I think it's it's a very good tra uh, testing ground, and that's what normal draft is there for too. When you're playing, you know, don't feel like you have to jump into ranked weight when you hit level 30. Any of you guys who might not be 30 right now, spend your, spend a month just playing draft games. Spend a month playing normal games. Try every role. Try to learn the characters. Try to learn the matchups. Just knowing what they basically do, if you know what their Q, W, E, and R do, and you don't have to do any damage, just what it does, it's going to help you in that laning phase. I can't. I can't agree with you more. Especially, you know, normal draft is really use it to try things. Use it to try ideas you might have that you say, you know, eh, I want to see if this character is in, to my play style or this character is to my play style. I had to do it. I know when I was coming up, I was like, you know, just just trying different characters to see I liked anything, you know, because the only only character I think I attached to was uh, Alistar at some point. And then Oslander was was trying to uh, suggest a few characters for me to try, and I kept going through trying different things, you know, normal drafts, friends games, whatever. And I finally settled on a couple characters that I actually liked. But there's so many there's so many champions in League of Legends that you can find more and more that if you can't find one that you love to play. I'm not sure what to tell you because there's so many different abilities and things to do in League of Legends that I think there's something for you to enjoy. You just need to find the right one for you. Right. And it's going to take. It will take time. That's why. That's why you just can't. You just can't jump into ranked at straight at level 30. You have to give it time. You have to find out what you can play the most, and you have to be. Able, you, you really should be proficient at one role, but know all the roles enough to be able to play them. And, and, and you that's have going to, to take you the furthest. You have to at least know. I will say, I really believe you need to know support because in the worst case scenario, you know you're the last pick. You don't get much choice. You probably get thrown in support in ranking. You just need to know enough about the basics of a couple support characters to be formidable uh, and know what your role is and have, you know, that kind of setup. I really believe that's the one you absolutely have. I think that everybody can do, not necessarily great, but they can do it well enough that they can make it work, you know, and, and, and play it as need be. For sure. Hey, Auslander. Yeah. I think you could take this next point about time out of lane is time wasted, because you yell at me about that a lot. I don't yell at you about, well... You, you, um, you yell at me about it quite a bit, especially while well, you yell at me about more about pushing, but uh, that's a little more of an advanced technique. But uh, I kind of figured that you'd be able to talk about time out of lane as time wasted. Well, I would, I mean, the thing that, like, that I yell at you uh, most of the time about <laughs> is when you, you don't freeze the lane, when um, right. the lane is, it's in that, like, like you said before, that little safe zone where it's just out of tower range. Uh, and I noticed maybe it's just like a psychological thing you just get more frantic but I noticed like you occasionally would push that out instead of when the best play would be to just hold it there as long as you could so that a, it's easier for your jungler to come in because they don't have to uh, you know it's further the enemy team is from their own tower you know in safety and then also it's just a, you know it's a better position you're you're close to your tower if, if they do try to gank and uh, that that to me is like a, an important lesson is that when you know to not always push your lane and then when you have it in that nice little safety zone just to try to keep it there as long as you can and even if it means you just tank minions for a couple seconds while you wait for the next wave to show up you just you know you do that have your support do it that's what they're there for right get a shield sit there and do it I, I like that technique i've been practicing it quite a bit more recently especially after we had our conversation about it and yelled at each other during the yeah, day yeah i scream at him well, I, I know I'm wrong in that, and I can't argue it. It's just I try to reverse engineer why I'm doing it, and I fail because I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. But well, the worst the worst is too. I watch sometimes if I log on, I see you in a game. I'll like pop in real quick and see what you're doing in uh, spectator mode, and that three minute thing really kills it because I like wanna. I see you do something. You know, a Pwn is a better player than me. I'm you know, but uh, you know when you look in on something and you're not in the the heat of the battle, you can definitely 
you know, spot other people's flaws. Right. Whereas, you know, if you saw me ever try to 80 carry, you'd know that I'm not better than him. <laughs> um, but you, uh, you know, I, I popped in and I, I saw him make some kind of little technical mistake and I wanted to like, you know, tell him about it, but I can't like, if I even tell him it's, you know, it happened three minutes ago and he has no yeah. idea what I'm talking about. Like, what are you talking about? I'm doing fine. Yeah. Well, we got to kill three minutes later. I don't know what's wrong. It, yeah. it was just a little, it was a misstep. No, I think the best thing about that is just you messaging me like we had that Nasus. Hey, Nasus only got six farm in his queue three minutes ago, so I'm assuming he's only probably got another six three minutes from now. <laughs> yeah, Mon Monte Cristo was playing top with uh, Volibear against this Nasus that was awful, and I was kind of wa I was jumping around watching all lanes, but I looked up there and I noticed I think Monte Cristo had like 60 farm, and uh, um, Nasus had like I think it was less than 20. And then I looked at his wow. queue, and this is like 10 minutes in, and I I think he had. He had, yeah, he had three last hits on his queue. Like ten <laughs> wow. Uh, that game was a complete troll game. There was a lot worse about that. Yeah, like, the, I mean, there was an Evelyn. That was... was and an, uh, the uh, double AP bottom. Gragas Bowser a hard bot with my Varus that had worse positioning than I have. Yeah, his Varus <laughs> was getting killed, but... Yeah. <laughs> I decided to run a rush of death cap on Tarek. Let's, let's put it how that game was going. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I was stealing kills from everybody with RWs. I just wait. <laughs> AP terror. Oh, it's so good. But oh, terror. I guess the next. Guess one of the last points of um, discussion tonight is warding in the middle and warding for yourself. And since Ranhurt hasn't talked so much, I'm going to force him to talk about warding in the middle. Yeah. So I mean, that's just a big thing that you can do if you're playing in the middle. Uh, you should probably be um, warding for yourself. And one of the keys here is that. You know, obviously you don't want to be spending a whole lot of money on wards because you are, you know, carrying and so you don't really want to, you know, spend all your money on wards. That's what junglers and supports are for. But you can't always, especially if you're solo queuing, you can't always um, rely on the fact that, you know, your jungler or your or the support's going to put the wards in a place that's going to benefit you in mid. And that's really your number one concern is your survivability and your ability to get away from ganks. So if you can afford two wards, go ahead and do it. But really, I'm not talking about just having the money for it. I'm saying having the expendable money for it and being able to buy two wards, one for each side of the uh, river of, on each side of mid. Um, but generally, if you can afford one ward, then that's great. Put your ward uh, where you feel comfortable on either side of, of river and then cheat to that side. So actually position your champion closest to that ward on the other side of, of the uh, of the creep wave and then last hit from there. And what, what that'll do is it'll keep you away from the other side of the river that you don't have vision on. You don't know if the jungler's there coming to gank you. Um, and that, that way if the jungler does come on your ward side, then you're going to be able to get away from it and you'll have enough uh, reaction to it. So um, those are just some quick keys for uh, warding for yourself in mid. I think it's uh, really key. I mean, obviously, bottom lane's got supports that are going to be putting wards up. Top lane's very used to warding for themselves as well. Um, they usually always have a ward that they put in trap brush or, or in the river, so um, if you can ward for yourself in mid, that's going to save a lot of time uh, for the rest of your teammates and not having to ward for you and also give you a little bit of peace of mind. Yeah, very good point. Let me say as a jungler, you should, if you do play jungle, you know, most junglers are utility or tank based where you are not necessarily going to be the carry. So you should be helping with wards, especially for uh, I take I take a I take either a regular ward or pink ward, depending on how much gold I have when I go back. Uh, and I definitely use that in key areas. Uh, I will pink ward the dragon when need be, uh, knowing that the support is strapped or being stuck wherever they may be. Or I may take a regular ward and either use it for top lane or mid lane, depending on where I think it's it might be more needed. So, if you're a jungler, you do need to help out with warding, uh, and and your carries will thank you. Uh, even in rank games, they will actually thank you if you ward for them. Uh, I, I can actually attest to that because it's happened a lot recently. Unless your carries ran hurt, in which case he just feels obligated that you do that for him. He doesn't say anything. <laughs> I mean, obviously that kill was of my own doing. Uh, it's it's also the it's also a fact that you know if you're getting chased within your own jungle by uh, opposing jungler and the opposing mid, uh, chances of Ranhurt actually coming to your <laughs> rescue 
They're pretty slim to none. I'll just warn you that now if you ever <laughs> see him. Farm. He's got a farm with tower. Gotta get the farm. Yep. Farm's no. more important than saving you. I will well, we'll you. never see. <laughs> we'll never see Renhard again, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, that's pretty uh, good. Yeah, that's yeah. true. He's done. GG. Well, GG. <laughs> So that kind of that really does kind of wrap up our From Minnows to Sharks episode here. I hope you guys learned quite a bit that you know we've learned over the months that we've been playing years for some of us. And you know, if you guys have any other ideas or anything you want to bring up, we'll probably do another one of these episodes. I'm not sure when. It'll probably be 10, 15 episodes, episodes from now. Twenty one episodes from now. We're, uh, I yeah. like everything to be linear. Yes, so. exactly. Twenty one episodes from now. Thank you, Mathlander. So, you know, anything up, you guys can always respond to us at feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com. Let us know about any of the tips we brought up tonight. And quickly moving into the last couple things we have, the AD carry competition. I had five signups total for it, and we'll be streaming those on Thursday night starting at 8 o'clock Eastern uh, Daylight Time. And I will be going with Wrecker in the bottom lane against a number of fans and listeners all alike, and even Holy Spork and his support. I don't remember who his support is now. We'll be playing. He's a staff member for GG Chronicle now. Um, so congratulations. Welcome on, Holy. And uh, I believe I have a couple other people that want to play with me that, you know, staff members or whatever. So it'll be a fun night of watching me play in bottom lane and try to kill some people. You'll get to hear the Skype conversation between Wrecker and me. and you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see how that works out. It'll probably just be a lot of bong hits. And I was going to say, that might be not safe for... Uh for work if you happen to be <laughs> at certain points just saying i'll just tell him meet his bike lay off it <laughs> so and, and one last thing guys this is kind of like a plea for podcast support we have you know we have quite a number of listeners we have a lot of fans we have a lot of dedicated people to this podcast we get a number of voicemails and everything but don't be afraid to contact us don't be afraid to leave uh, message us on Twitter. I actually have a topic of conversation for next week along with the patch assuming it comes out and that came from Twitter so if you guys are out there and you guys have ideas or things you want to hear something you saw on a website or whatever please let us know as well as share the podcast with anybody and everybody you can find. Post it on Twitter and tag us at T-Force Podcast. Uh, share it on Facebook. Do what you can you know we want to keep giving back to you guys in the future we're going to be running more competitions and they're not going to be just follow us on Twitter or here let's do this AD carry thing we're even thinking about doing um, a GG Chronicle community game night I guess you want to call it where we play with fans and we give it back with the battle arenas where we come back and go over your plays and everything so you know show, show us as much love as you guys can and you know, get us as far as you can because we're here for you guys we want to make you better we want to make the community better so um, we love our fans and where we're, you know, we're ready to bring more content to you. Hopefully, Ranher is as well. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll be here. So um, yeah, maybe. That that so uh, that yeah, that pretty much ends this podcast for this week. Oscillator, do, do us a favor and take us out. Okay, okay. If you want to give us a call, it's two zero three four nine four two zero three four nine three six seven two three. You can text us at that uh, number as well. Or if you want to send us an email, it's feedback at trinityforcepodcast dot com. Or you can follow us on Twitter, which is T Force Podcast or GG Chronicle. And if you want to uh, make friends with Ranhurt and Diablo Three, <laughs> uh, <laughs> he's Ranhurt in there. I don't know. I, I think yeah, you have to add it with, a, with an email. But. Yeah, hit me up on Twitter. I'll yeah, hit you. him up on Twitter, and he'll add you because he's looking for friends. Oh, yeah, new friends, friends, friends. friends. Replace old friends. Yay! Actually, a lot of my old friends came over too. So I don't really know who's playing League of Legends anymore. Well, apparently we are tonight, so... I, oh, look at that. Assuming that Hornet wants to join us, I got a five-man team ready to go. Yeah, there you oh, go. there we go. So, all right, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, catch us next week for T-Force 31, where we'll discuss, hopefully, the Darius patch and anything else. So, guys, we will see you. Good night. <laughs>